Steven's new to the bay from Chicago. You hate it here, don't you? It's just different. The kids are strange. Hello. Hey. It's like they're always smiling. They're always happy. Kelly Connor said she saw Andy Efkin bite the head off a kitten in a fit of rage. They're brainwashed, lobotomized, programmed. They used to be my friends. Gavin thinks some sinister force is taking over the crate of a meatheads. A sinister force? Now with every successive kid, we are getting closer and closer to perfection. All in favor? I can't go home. When I get there, they're waiting for me. Don't leave me alone like this! I'm a friend of Gavin's. See you around. Gavin's a good boy now. Not what you think. I got a couple tiny glitches to iron up. Will you go out with me? No. What up? Wrong. Bad. It's not bad, it's normal. It... Ah! Who's gonna believe you, huh? Your parents? You signed me up for the program? Paranoia, paranoia, everybody's coming to get me. It's a new kind of cool. No! Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. Dad! No one to trust. We want what's best for you. What about what I want? I'm not sick, but I'm not well. Wow. Disturbing behavior. episode of the B-Movie Club. I'm your host Kevin. This week we'll be discussing the 1998 horror science fiction classic Disturbing Behavior starring James Marsden. Uh, you got Katie Holmes, Bruce Greenwood, William Sadler. It's an all-star cast. You know him, don't you? For those of you joining us for the first time, each week on the B-Movie Club we discuss certain guilty pleasures and forgotten classics of the past. Go ahead and go to our page on Facebook, Original B-Movie Club, and give us the thumbs up. Go to our page on YouTube at KD9575 and hit the subscribe button. It's totally free. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at The B Movie Club. If you do all that, you get all the latest updates. Anytime I post a new video or a new B Movie ish link, anything about B Movie news, it's all one stop shopping place where all of it comes to you right to your doorstep, okay? No need to thank me, okay? You can thank me by spreading the word. You know, the more the merrier, I always say. Disturbing behavior. Steve has moved to a new community, appears to be in the Pacific Northwest, called Cradle Bay. Uh, his family, um, his parents, and his little sister, evidently there was uh, a family tragedy. His older brother seemed to have committed suicide, uh, directly preceding. Uh, what's occurred in this movie and the family's very upset so they moved from Chicago to Cradle Bay it's kind of like let's get a new fresh start okay cool so Steve is walking around the high school checking things out along the way he's met by this crazy goth looking dude wearing like a, a hoodie comes up to him named Gavin who breaks down the social structure of the school you know there are the motorheads over here there are the intellectuals over here um, but there's this other crazy group called the Blue Ribbons, who are kind of these goody goodies. They all wear like Letterman jackets, they all have like crew cuts, um, and they, they do well academically as well as extracurricularly and in sports and things like that. They, they have their stuff together, evidently. But they behave a little too strange, a little too straight laced a lot of the time. It's 
It's very strange what's going on here. Okay, earlier in the movie, Gavin was was uh, was eavesdropping and kind of spying on Lover's Leap or the point or whatever it is, where he sees one of the blue ribbons in the car with you know a nice young lady or uh, having a nice evening out evidently. Uh, but when things start to get a little intimate, uh, the blue ribbon guy blows a gasket and <laughs> takes care of the girl, kills her for no reason. Although he calls her some disparaging uh, names, it's very upsetting. Some slut shaming going on there, it's very upsetting. So, <laughs> which I find it's bad when you go on dates and they, you know, you go up to the point and then you, you kill the person. It doesn't go over real well. So Gavin's watching all this, he's horrified. And then the police arrive, so he's like, whew, at least the police will take care of this. But after the guy who killed his date promptly kills one of the deputies, the sheriff grabs and says, whoa, 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 tiger. So the sheriff is in on it in some way. He's going to cover up all the misdeeds. So Gavin and his crazy albino friend UV, I guess called ironically UV, uh, show Steve what's going on and kind of Gavin's got this, this world view that there's something sinister going on based upon his observations, including that crazy moment up at uh, Lover's Leap or whatever it is. So Steve's like, ah, that's just crazy. What are you talking about? You know what you're saying. Gavin introduces Steve to uh, the local mean girl, the tough girl, Rachel, who's there. And you know she's tough because she wears a lot of leather jackets. She's got a nose ring, a little bit of flannel. So she's tough. Okay. So the three of them start hanging out, um, Gavin and Rachel and Steve, they go do things together. Evidently, UV's not invited. It's very upsetting to UV, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> so basically, they're, they're eavesdropping on this kind of PTA meeting where they discover all the parents are meeting with this guy named Dr. Caldecott, who he's some kind of school psychologist, if you will. But they're discussing the Blue Ribbon program and how some of the parents have concerns because while their grades are going well and they seem to be very, you know, involved in school and blah, 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 they seem to be kind of mean to people who are not Blue Ribbons. Hmm. Interesting. Earlier in the movie, there was like a fight that broke out at the local uh, crazy uh, supermarket or whatever it is, the liquor store, where one of the Blue Ribbons named Chug... Okay, uh, flips out on some crazy stoner guys uh, and beats them up. It's very upsetting. Evidently, this happens a lot where the blue ribbons, you know, when they're not getting straight A's or just beating up innocent people and no one seems to notice. So they're very concerned, the parents are. To which the doctor says, oh, no big deal. You know, after they've, uh, you know, made this change in their life, you know, there's a period of just being kind of snobby, as if that explains it. Okay. Gavin, through his eavesdropping, discovers, uh-oh, I'm next on the list. My parents have signed me up for the Blue Ribbon program, where allegedly they go away on a, a you know, weekend retreat sort of thing, and then they come back totally changed. And no one ever asks it. Any, nobody asks why or how this could be. So uh, Gavin tries to get Steve to help him. Help me, Steve. Um, Gavin is like, I got a gun, you know, if anything goes down, I'll, I'll be able to take care of myself. Steve pulls the gun away from him and just ignores Gavin's cries for help. <laughs> Good times. So the next day, they're all hanging out at the cafeteria. Where's Gavin? Where's Gavin? He shows up wearing his sweater vest and his hair is all nice. No black trench coats or hoodies anymore for him. He, he's now a blue ribbon. When Steve tries to go talk to Gavin, the other blue ribbons basically start beating him up. <laughs> Again, everybody's in on it. School security, they're like, whatevs, no big deal. So Gavin is now a blue ribbon through and through. Earlier in the movie, we met the kindly janitor named uh, Mr. Newberry. And <laughs> he's kindly, he's, he's out trying to kill all the rats. There's a lot of rats evidently at the school, so he's created this device called the Eradicator that emits like a high piercing noise that's harmless to people but hurts the rats evidently. Um, while hanging out in the boiler room, I don't know why they do this, Steve 
<laughs> Steve is hanging out there with Gavin earlier, and now he's hanging out there by himself. He notices that uh, the janitor, who throughout the entire movie appears to be kind of mentally handicapped in some way, he notices that there's a copy of Slaughterhouse-Five sticking out of his back pocket. And Steve's like, wait a minute. You're not really mentally handicapped. You're actually a genius because you read Kurt Vonnegut. So to which Newberry goes, okay, you got me, my bad. You know, I'm actually a rocket scientist from MIT or Caltech or something. No, he doesn't say that. But he's just like, oh, yeah, you know, I really am smart. I just, you know, I like to be left alone, you know. It, it's easier if I just pretend to be crazy or uh, a little dim-witted. Then people just don't bother me. So I finally enough time to read. I, I don't know what the, the thought process is, but hey, you know what? Whatever floats your boat. So uh, they, uh, Rachel and Steve decide they're going to go to the hospital where Dr. Caldecott works to get to the bottom of this. They rush out there and um, they sneak in. Evidently it's a high security place where two high school kids can easily sneak in. And they discover it's like one floor of the cuckoo's nest where people are just wandering around. Uh, there's no security of any kind, no order orderlies. Um, and they discover that it's not any kind of, they're concerned it was like brainwashing, that it's like, oh, we're, you know, we're using these techniques to brainwash you. It's brainwashing in the sense they actually are surgical techniques, where they go in there and they put stuff in your brain to, uh, to make you act differently. But it's not a perfect system. They're still working out the bugs. The bugs include the fact that these kids go in psychotic rages whenever they have, <laughs> let's just say, certain impulses that uh, are common to teenagers. You know what I'm saying? Certain impulses. Uh, earlier in the movie, Steve is coming home, and there's the, one of the hot blue ribbons who's supposed to be tutoring his sister. She's there, and when she looks at Steve, he's such a good-looking guy that she gets these impulses, and she starts flipping out and tries to get him with a, with a uh, piece of glass, and she's banging her head against the wall. It's very upsetting. So <laughs> as long as they don't have those impulses, I guess they're okay, even though they're beating up Steve in the cafeteria for not a whole lot of a reason. So anyway, I don't want to spoil everything. I don't want to give it all away, except to say that Steve rushes home to tell his parents, only to discover, uh-oh, his parents have signed him up for the program as well. So what is, it, what is he going to do? The whole world's against him. Um, <laughs> this movie came out in 1998. Uh, it was written by this man named Scott Rosenberg, who'd go on to do such beautiful works of art like Con Air, Gone in 60 Seconds, some of my favorite films, okay? James Marsden, uh, who played Steve, uh, he used to be like a, a underwear model or something. I don't know if he's an underwear model. He was a model of some sort. Uh, before going on to be in movies, like I said, he did this movie. He went on to be in like the X-Men movies. You've seen him around. He was in Enchanted. He's like Prince Charming. He's a good-looking guy. Katie Holmes was coming off uh, Dawson's Creek, of course. This is one of the first movies that she was involved with before it rocketed her to stardom. Uh, the guy who plays Gavin, his name is Nick Stahl. You've seen him around. He was in, uh, what was it, Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. You remember that one, or maybe not. Uh, and what's interesting about this movie is the villain of the movie is named Mr. Caldecott, and one of the protagonists is named Mr. Newberry. So Newberry Awards and Caldecott Awards are awards given to children's books. Why is this important? I don't know. It just is. Okay? A lot of critics didn't like this movie all that much uh, because they felt it was kind of an inferior ripoff to such movies like The Stepford Wives where it's that same kind of thing where kind of troubled people are in a small town and then one by one they start changing to these kind of perfect versions but they're not so perfect after all. So, it's fine. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? There's <laughs> There are a lot of... Uh, Evidently, the, the writer and the director felt that there was more to the story that was going on, but that producers cut certain crucial scenes out that kind of affected the quality, perhaps. So, <laughs> I enjoyed this movie. It's fun for what it's trying to do. It's not going to win any awards. It currently has a 32% rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know if it's quite that bad. You know what I'm saying? It has some scenes that are enjoyable. Uh, it was well written. You know, the acting was fine. And you see, like, 
you know, Katie Holmes, the height of her powers before Tom Cruise got involved. So that's something as well. So if you haven't seen it, rush out. It is currently streaming on Netflix. Um, next week, I'm going to move away from whatever kind of movie this is, this horror sci-fi kind of deal, into the comedy realm, okay? The Patrick Dempsey classic, Can't Buy Me Love, also streaming instantly on Netflix. So rush out, see it, send me any favorite scenes, favorite quotes, comments, or questions, and I may just talk about it on the show. Also, any movie suggestions, you send it to me, I add it to my queue, and I'm ready to do this. You know, I'm here, I'm here for you. I'm here to cater to your wants and needs, okay? So there you have it. Good times had by all. Don't forget to go to our page on Facebook, Original B Movie Club. Give us the thumbs up. Go to our page on YouTube and hit subscribe. It's totally free. And follow me on Twitter at The B Movie Club. As you know, I end every episode with a totally out of context quote. And here it is. Hey, teacher, leave those kids alone. Uh, there are a lot of good little lines in this. Uh, good times. And anytime you can throw in a, in a, Pink, a Pink Floyd reference, you just got to do it. You know what I'm saying? As a teacher myself, I often roll into the parking lot blasting, hey, teacher, leave those kids alone. No, I don't. Good times. So thank you for joining us. Next week, <laughs> can't buy me love. Be well.